The following podcast is a Next Level production. Found you. Not sure what's worse. Those glasses you tied on or that mask? Are you following me? I sensed the Noor. Panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about Miss Marvel Season 1, Episodes 3 and 4. Episode 3 entitled Destined, and Episode 4 being Seeing Red. So, Steve, do you want to give us both particular synopsis? Or Absolutely. Absolutely. So, for Destined, we have, ahead of Amir's wedding, Kamala may face grave consequences due to a crucial decision she makes. That's pretty short and sweet to the point for that one. And then Seeing Red is Kamala travels around the world to solve the mystery of the bangle and her family's history. Yeah. And overall thoughts about both together? Do you have an idea? I liked them both, uh, and I, I have to give props to you. You called it on episode in episode the end of episode two. The big bad is Cameron's mom. You figured it out, and her name is Najima. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I love that episode three. We got a bunch of answers to questions, and uh, and a lot of things answered, and then we got a lot of more. We got a few more answers in episode four, but of course, uh, we got that ending. That how are they going to solve this in two episodes? You know, but I'm sure we'll get to that when we get uh, during our discussion to talk about it. But I did look it up. They didn't film in Pakistan because obviously political and religious things, they wouldn't be able to film in Pakistan. They actually filmed in Thailand. So, but it was cool uh, that what they got to do and what we got to see of the culture and of the people. And I, I read online that there were a lot of people, a lot of fans that thought they were actually in Pakistan. That's how good they, how well they did wow. the set dressing and the design and stuff. And like, I, for a while I thought, are they actually feeling, they can't be feeling in Pakistan. Can they? And, uh, but you know, be no, amazing entitled. if they did, but the fact yeah. that they were able to do that, uh, a lot of times they, a lot of the hidden stuff that they do with the Marvel, they do film in Georgia. And right. Uh, you weren't with us when we went to Sonoy, but in Sonoy, Georgia, they do a lot of filming locations for certain Marvel, Disney, all these different companies, and it's a very big filming locations, and they do that there, and they have a film company with several studios. They mm. did it for, I think, Hawkeye, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, a whole bunch of them. Right. And they, they're they able to model and make these things exactly what they need to be for the moment. And mm. the fact that they're able to use, like, you, what was it you said uh, where they were filming? Bangkok, Thailand. Bangkok, yeah. and Thailand. And I think, I, I think Falcon Winter Soldier actually did get some filming in, like, Croatia or someplace like that. They did get some overseas time in, but not much. I, and Hawkeye, I'm sure, didn't. I'm sure Hawkeye was all stateside stuff. But yeah, and they, they they were able to do all that stuff to make it work out. And I'm glad that mm-hmm. they, they do pay attention to those things <laughs> uh, with, with both episodes. I was very happy with what we got. Yeah. Uh, the third one, I, I was very happy for the fact that we got a little bit more information about Kamala, the bangle. We do get more, like you stated, Najima comes in. We f- get that information out. We get the wedding. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kamala's brother's wedding, which I thought was pretty cool. And it was one of my highlights of the actual episode. I I enjoyed it very much. Kamala actually taking charge within the actual episode. And then part four, we go see her. And as you stated before, we we go to Pakistan Mm -hmm. within this particular episode. And she gets to see her Nani. And I think she gets a little bit of kind of uh, more of a connection with her own mom, her mommy. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. Mammy or whatever she calls her. Yeah. And uh, more of an understanding between them. And uh, she learns a little bit more about her powers. She gets more information. And I think the whole point, and just like with Moon Knight and with Falcon and Winter Soldier, is understanding their position within this world before they move more into the movies. 
And I think that's literally what the end result is with this particular show is that we're getting Miss Marvel prepped for mm-hmm. where she's going to be within the films. And I think exactly that's what they're doing with all these particular characters. So once we do see them on film, we've already been prepped with these shows and those people who actually see those films will be able to like, Oh, where can I, Oh, it's on Disney plus. And we could go back, refer to it if we never watched it before. And now we're filled in on the backstory of how they got their powers or where they stand within the story itself. So I'm, I'm loving how they're bringing this out with Marvel and how they're creating these characters and setting us up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's going to be the same thing. I think with, she hulk as well once we get that yeah and i I look forward to that as well yeah that's gonna be cool um i love that you know you mentioned you mentioned the wedding scene i thought that was really great having the bali the whole bollywood dancers and oh yeah as you mentioned before kind of before we started recording it was great they even included bruno because bruno is part of the family you know so they included him in the dance and like Mm -hmm. it seemed like the the bride was genuinely surprised she didn't realize that her husband had been practicing this and was part of this this whole thing and then when he (laughs) pulled her up there it was just a really good it was a a really pleasant time and of course then of course cameron's mother has to break the party yeah 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 yeah, the clandestines or clandestines if you want to call them get involved because they want to take that uh her well, they little, wanted to take uh, the bangle, yeah. The bangle they, itself yeah. away mm-hmm. from her, take the power, just so they could go. Uh, we have a little bit of information, too, which, uh, you know, during a simpler time within the episode, she actually gives the story of about her grand, great, uh, her grand, great-grandmother, right. Aisha. And that is what Kamala needed to hear. We also find out that what they call these people are jinns. Yeah. Yeah. Of all things, uh, a jinn technically is a genie, but uh, in the next episode, we find out later on through the other people that uh, Kamal encounters in Pakistan that if Thor had came down to the world right. in that particular, they, he would also be known as a jinn. Yeah, that so, the word jinn just kind of covers any kind of supernatural being kind of correct. thing is what is what for for them anyway and and so i you know i love that when they when she got with that group in the in the next episode and they kind of explained to her that what the clandestines were like he knew who they were he knew that aisha was part of them uh you know we get this whole information that we've been we've been wondering about this strange relationship between kamala uh kamala's mother and her mother and we discover that in episode four where we find out that you know um kamala's grandmother her nani Yes. Bought in, bought into everything the father told her about Aisha, that she was a jinn and, and she was probably, you know, talking about all these theories about other dimensions and things. And that, then that caused a wedge between her and her daughter that caused her daughter to actually have be so embarrassed to actually mm-hmm. leave the country and come to America. So it's, it's, it's really kind of cool that we got, we found out that information because we've been wondering what's the strain? Why is there this strain? Why is, you know, uh, why was Kamala's mom so against her having the bangle and, and all of that? So it's, it was really great to see how these two episodes kind of played together in, yeah. in that way. Yeah. In a sense, too, it's like we also learned that why her mother left Pakistan from her own mother. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, her Ami left her nani. And that way, because everybody thought her grandmother was pretty much crazy and her mother had to get away from that and create a whole new world from her. And then she could create this own world where nobody knows her mother. Mm -hmm. And within the next episode, she is basically saying to her own mother, her, you know, Kamala's mother is saying to her, her grandmother, please come to the United States. Nobody will know you there, but we will. But you could start over. I had to live this life of your mother's crazy. Right, you know. Right, she was able to come yeah. here and 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 change her change her stars, so to speak. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, it it was it's it's more of a family based thing, very cultured, a different culture than you know. I come from an, a family that's mostly Italian, and you know, with some English in it. But and in the Italian side, I can understand it <laughs> too, mm-hmm. based upon the Hindi and the Pakistani culture based within and how they are and. uh and I know this too from friends. I have a friend who is uh, Indian, who is Pakistani, uh, who comes from Pakistan as well. He and I talk cricket and stuff of that, you know, nature. And 
he tells me certain things about his culture and I, I've known some of this, mm -hmm. but it's nice to see it, how it's brought out and presented in this light for the show, for those who have never experienced it in their own. But to me, I've had what they had in the second, uh, or the fourth episode. If you, uh, look at what, uh, Pani Puni and that stuff is hot. Mm -hmm. and don't eat that darn when it's hot outside. Trust me. It'll, mm -hmm. it'll burn you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love, you know, another thing going back to episode three real quick before we get too, too muddied in the waters here. Another thing that was yeah. confirmed because we kind of discussed this at the end of episode two was who Kamala was seeing. And it is confirmed for us at the beginning of episode three, that it is Cam Ram's mother that because mm. of this tie to the Noor and, and because of using the bangle, that's what exposed her to them and what mm -hmm. she was able. So it was Cameron's mother that she was seeing in those visions. But then of course, at the end of episode three, we get the, what you already talked about was the grandmother also seeing the vision of the train and uh, which is going to play right into episode four as well. And, uh, you know, we talked about Nakia a little bit at the end of episode three, finding out that, uh, Kamala is nightlight horrible name i'm so glad other people acknowledged how bad that name is <laughs> it is it's such <laughs> you know, a bad name um, it's kind of like spider what was it uh, the monkey spider or yeah <laughs> what it is with tom holland and uh no way home i, yeah. I thought it was funny <laughs> um but you know and we kind of talked about maybe something happening between nakia and bruno and when he takes her out of their there there might have been a little look there between the two of them so you you know you might have you might have something uh, oh, a yeah, thought yeah. there. So yeah, uh, that, that is a thought, but you know, it, it's kind of my friends' rumor. Mm -hmm. Kind of, if, you, if those of you who watch the TV show Friends, it's my feeling is that that might happen. Yeah, uh, and, and it had happened in in the show itself. Not, uh, I'm using this as like a, a movie term. The Friends that somebody actually did. I forget right. his name who did it. But uh, Friends did that. And uh, eventually later on, they kind of initiated it and it worked out. I just love that idea and that aspect. It would be so great because, you know, it, it would leave Kamala alone. No Bruno, no Nakia, but Nakia and Bruno would be together and be their best friends together. Instead of where with uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man, he had MJ and then he had Ned. You know, and it's like MJ and Peter, and then there was Ned. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be Kamala, and then Nakia and Bruno. <laughs> yeah, when we'll, and we'll see what happens. You never know. I mean, yeah. Cam Ram got left behind in the United States, so when this comes back to the United States, if it comes back to the United States, we might see him again, or there might be potentially something with this other kid, the Red Dagger. Oh, Kino. Kid. So yeah, yeah. Kino, yeah. and uh, that that's something that I enjoyed on episode four as well. Mm -hmm. Um, not to jump into that, but that, that first encounter that she gets and the, the rapport that they have, like he, he was like a ninja mm -hmm. in my opinion during that scene. And that was her going to the railroad. Yeah. Now I'm no, I'm jumping into episode four, but I just love that scene. And you know, it's like, then he realizes that she has the bangle. Uh, he, you know, she asks him about Aisha. He goes, how do you know Aisha? Oh, and then it kind of clicks, things click, and they're able to work it out. Uh, there's a few quips. I just love that aspect within that particular episode. And, uh, you know, I love the one line that he says. It's like, come with me if you want to live. Yeah. <laughs> she, she, it's like, okay, he's Terminator. And he goes, no, I just always wanted to say that. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. that was amazing. Yeah. That was a great I quote. That, I love that he says that. He says, I always wanted to say that, but really, we should go. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> like, because the police are there. Yeah. I, I mean, episode four really is is the crux of what we wanted to talk about tonight because but, episode three had a lot in there that fight oh, yes. at the end where we see that kamala has really come come on a grasp of her powers very well you know yes. and she's using them in an offensive way and a defensive way um we see Cameron fight a little bit we see and and uh all of that is really cool and then of course it's the the department of damage control that saves the day there at the end by arresting the, the the clandestines but of course in episode four they did escape but yeah they did escape but the cool thing is that we do get them the the damage control does come into the mosque mm -hmm. and we get that whole thing within the mosque it's like yeah, next time please take off your shoes 
<laughs> to yeah. the woman. I forget her name. The, the yeah. agent that's there. Where Nikita and, knew about search warrants and stuff. Yeah, that was yep, great. Yep. That was a good And scene. that was a great report. And it shows Nakia showing her knowledge in, in, you know, and how important she is within mm-hmm. the show itself. And that the character is really very much needed because she is Kamala's best friend. One of Kamala's best friends, too. Yeah. Um, did you have anything else? Um, that we could- really from episode three, not really much else. I had a few little quotes from episode three that I thought was pretty funny when Kamala tells, uh, tells Bruno, she says, I'm a gin. And he says like Antonic. <laughs> I thought was, <laughs> was, was funny. Uh, and then of course, Bruno saying, I swear he gets my name wrong on purpose, you know, is, is really, really good. Um, so yeah, just some great little things there. Um, the when she, when he boils down what could happen if she actually does try to send them back to the Noor and, and he says if if you help if you help them go home some things might go boom because she's like you got to dumb yeah. it down for me basically so yeah uh, I also love too within episode three uh, Mr Khan coming into uh, which pretty much is like a convenience store a deli mm-hmm. or whatever that where Bruno is and Bruno is like researching everything about Jen and her powers and everything, but he has to get the fruit pies. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, that is something of a Marvel thing from the 70s and 80s. I don't know if you listeners know or remember, or you're as old as I am, and I remember it, or I'm just crazy, but they had a whole thing with Marvel with fruit pies. They had Marvel stuff on there. But he goes, I can't get enough of these things, but I'm not allowed to eat them. And he goes, your secret safe with me. Mr. Khan, you know, Mr. Mm-hmm. Khan and blah, blah, blah. And they had a nice rapport. And the fact that, you know, Mr. Khan does appreciate and love Bruno like family as well. And I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah. I love that Easter egg, though, about the fruit pies, too. Because cool. uh, Marvel had some sort of licensing thing where they would put, like, the Incredible Hulk, Spider-Man, and all that stuff on fruit pies back in the late 70s, early 80s. Oh, very cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Nice. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you want, we can just transition right into mostly episode four because episode four picks us up on the plane, of course, with, with Kamala. And I, I love the running gag kind of throughout this show of the napping pillow. <laughs> Everybody's like, Oh, you're a stuffed animal. And she's like, No, it's a napping pillow. And that's kind of been a running thing, you know, through, yes. through these four episodes where everybody sees her with that animal and they make jokes about it. And, and, and it's stuff. a sloth too. That's yeah, why it's, it's napping. <laughs> right. It's her sloth. It's her sloth, sloth baby, uh, uh, napping pillow but yeah i just thought it was great it was really just fun the scene on the airplane is really is just kind of a, a fun scene i i think it's a little weird that a mother and a daughter would would set with a person in between them i don't know if it, that's, it had to do with flights and i guess um, probably those are the cheapest tickets they could probably get yeah but you, you know you most the, most americans yeah. most americans if you have two people who are flying together there's a person in the the middle seat that person in the middle seat will give up that seat and take either the window or the aisle in order to let the two people who are actually related set together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's, that's why it was a little, it was just a little strange to me. Maybe it's a cultural thing. I think it's a cultural thing, <laughs> you know, uh, but it just seemed, it just seemed a little weird to me that, that they were setting with a stranger in between them. That is true. <laughs> uh, I love too about the uh, the this particular episode. Kamala talked to her nani about the bangle, mm-hmm. and how Kamala is like when she gets to Pakistan. What? <laughs> you know, it's like you explains to her and tells her about being a jinn, and Kamala's like, "Wait, hold on, <laughs> this is real." Uh, you're just talking about it nonchalantly, right? Grandma. Yeah, yeah. What's Grandma's going not on? freaked out. Grandma's not freaked out about it at all. Yeah. Exactly. And it's just like, because she was looked at at that point by her own daughter, you know, uh, Kamala's grandmother, you know, mother was looking at her own grandmother as like being crazy, but it's Mm -hmm. like, "Eh, it is. And this is our family and this is where it comes from. And she gives her pretty much a brief history about Aisha and everything else and how it's all about genetics. It, It just basically skipped to Kamala. And with that bangle, it just opened up everything that she had. She, you know, basically she tells her how, it, you know, that bangle had changed her life, talks about the train and basically how special Kamala is. And it was very touching. Well, and yeah, I thought, that led I me to it. 
Yeah, that led me to a question that I want to ask, because in light of what happens at the end of the episode, because remember, the grandmother says the last time she saw the bangle, it saved her life, and she was able to follow a trail of stars to her father, mm-hmm. right? Which would be Kamala's great-grandfather, Correct. Aisha's husband. Yes. I'm wondering now, and I'm just... I, I have not read anything about this. I haven't seen anything. I'm just Mm -hmm. spitballing this out there. I'm wondering because we're, it apparently, it seems like at the end of the episode that Kamala has traveled back in time to the train, to the night, to that night. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. And I, I think Kamala may either meet Aisha or she may be the one who gives the trail of stars so that her grandmother can find the father. Grandfather, her yeah. great grandfather, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, 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 I wouldn't be. I would put put it past them to do yeah. that. It would yeah. be perfect. I, I would, I would love for them to to somehow wrap that up in a bow um, it, with us because I think that would just be a cool moment where Kamala gets to realize she's the one, you know, who saved the day, so to speak. So exactly to put a twist of things in our conversation, but. I've already mentioned it to my favorite scene within episode four was the fight between Kino and her meeting him mm-hmm. and their great quips between the fight scene, which was great because Kamala was able to get, you know, her powers in order and know how to fight somebody and that whole rapport and everything. I thought the dimensions of uh, uh, her to about, you know, the way she does everything is like Donkey Kong. <laughs> and then she talks to him about uh, he's his fight structure is more about like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which I thought was like, oh, great. We've got more comic book talk and like cool pop culture, but also the uh, the wedding scene where Bruno is dancing and you already briefed on it. And I thought it was great, too. I thought that was a great scene in the sense that, you know, you, you have something that is Indian based. And you got a white person involved. Now, mind you, he's the odd man out, but I thought it was great of representation of like with the Bollywood dancing and everything else. I, I thought those two scenes within both two episodes, I just love them perfectly. Yeah. 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 It was, it was great. And, you know, it's one of those the moment when she throws the dagger at him and it kind of goes, it hits the ground kind of thing where she's really, oh, yeah, yeah. But she dagger. stops it with the, her, uh, her, her but, light block too. Yeah. She <laughs> yeah. stops it and, and, and catches it. And it's was, which is a cool, another cool moment, but uh, yeah. And she a, has the mask too. That, that was Bruno great. Gave yeah. Her. She puts the mask on, which is a little confusing, but I understand kind of why they maybe did it. Cause at the end of the episode, you know, when they stumble into that, uh, that, uh, where they had no, no exit, right. And they had yes. that last fight scene where I don't, did Cameron, uh, Cameron, did Kino kill that guy? I, it really looked like it. It, al- it looked almost, like it to me too. So I don't know if that guy's dead or not. We don't know if the Walid guy is dead or not. I mean, Bruno said he's gone. Um, yeah, but he but, also uh, uh, well, was it Wally? It's his Walid, name. Yeah, Walid, something like that. Walid. Yeah, and he actually gives her something that she could use for a costume too. It's almost like a vest. Mm-hmm. It's purplish in color, which is part of her costume. Yeah. So I think we're getting bits because Bruno gave her the mask. She's got this. I think by the end of this show, we will have a complete costume mm-hmm. for Miss Marvel herself. And I thought that was pretty cool that yeah. they're basically assembling this as it goes by. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, she takes the but she takes the mask off right before that fight in the, in mm-hmm. the little room there where then when Najima hits her, hits the bangle and sends her back in time. So I, I kind of yeah. understand why she takes the mask off, because story wise, she would have had to take it off when she traveled back in time. But her, it just being off was probably better. But it just was a little weird to me. That uh, that she t- she took it off at that moment just seemed a little little di- and you know that's one of those that's one of those uh, superhero tropes that uh, that they do a lot where the the superhero just wears this little stupid mask that covers part of their eyes and that's supposed to make everybody not know who yeah. they are. You can still yeah. see her hair and the, her face and everything I else. I mean, but uh, anyway, but that's just little things with superhero stuff, but. Right? Well, that's always been superhero stuff. Think Mm -hmm. about it. Look, look at Burt Ward as Robin and Batman. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Mm. It's like, hold on. Aren't you? Yeah. 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 You're Dick Grayson. (laughs) Yeah. No, you're not. (laughs) Yeah. No, I'm not him. He's somebody else. He's somebody else. (laughs) I have the same haircut and stature. 
uh, yeah, my, my tights are very tight and I hang around a guy who dresses like a bat, but no, I'm not him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, also within this, the information given to, uh, you said his name well. I'll, I'll say it as Waleed. Yeah, I Waleed, don't care. I think. We'll I call him as Waleed. I don't know if they uh, said it, actually said it in the show or not, but I know in the credits it had him as Waleed, and that's what I'm, I'm going to go with. That we're going to go with that then. Uh, the information that he gives Kamala about the clandestines and how it's a, a different realm. Mm -hmm. So this goes into multiverse purposes. And those of you listeners that are comic readers will know or know that how this particular Miss Marvel was granted her powers through the Terrigan Mist. Now, mind you, she was a version of an inhuman. Now, mind you, we don't talk about the Inhumans because it was such a bad show and movie, but we did get a little snippet of it and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness with, uh, with the, uh, the one character that we got, Black Bolt. And honestly, it, they kind of dismissed it really quick, and I'm thinking this is our next step. And I think that's how they're going to actually invoke the Inhumans as well as the mutants for X-Men. Uh, because they could actually state that the clandestines are basically just inhumans. Mm -hmm. And they've been with us all this time. We just didn't know. And the bangle is a way for Miss Marvel to bring that out, her powers within. And then there we have it. We, we have the inhumans. And then the mutants are, have been on Earth regularly, which are basically genetic doppelgangers of inhumans, as it were. And I'm looking forward to that. How they bring it out, I do not know, but that's just my radical thought. But I thought it was pretty cool that we, we get that information and uh, we got Wally to actually help further that information because he shows us it's kind of that weird thing where you see the realm and how they separate mm -hmm. and how uh, he explains how they want the clandestines to try to make Earth their home. Yeah, basically, their you know their their dimension or realm, whatever it is, is adjacent to ours, but separated by this Noor, and yep. they're trying to they're trying to break it through. Basically, is what he's saying, and he's he's telling Kamala that you know if she had done something back in New Jersey, it would have furthered that along. So uh, it's Correct. going to be interesting to see going going forward how this how this plays out, and if we find out, you know, he had a lot of information. Oh about, yeah, he did. About these, I, I'm uh, hoping he's alive. That's all yeah, I'm caring. I, I'm hoping, I, I love that guy. Uh, yeah. And on top of that, you know, it kind of mimics and kind of gives more information too about Shang Chi. Remember, mm -hmm. right? The His whole realms, the dimensions, and adjacent realms and stuff like so, that. Yeah, and it's more of Asian culture, which this mm -hmm. leads to. Yeah, and I think that is perfect for that, and I think that is why we're getting this show, particularly introduced to Miss Marvel. Maybe we'll get more Shang Chi eventually, right? And, and I did not, see not Shang Chi. Uh, remember Shang Chi, Shang Chi, right? <laughs> you just, you know, his friend was like making fun of him about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, and also, I was reading an article today that that actor apparently who played that guy is some pretty famous Bollywood actor who's actor? won a lot of awards. Oh a lot of awards and stuff. And I don't know if he's been in a lot of American kind of mainstream movies. So it was kind of a breakthrough for him. Oh, that's cool. Uh, on top of that, uh, for those of you who are, well, since things are opening, people are getting out. If in New York city, please go to Madame Tussauds because they have a whole Marvel wing that you could go to. It's amazing, but they also do have a Bollywood wing and I highly recommend it. You know, it's very culturally involved and look at it because they have a lot of wax figures in there from Bollywood. And I, to me, it was eye opening too because of how important Bollywood is to the Indian culture and, and to Pakistan and everything else. Uh, to me, I, I enjoyed it. So if you're out there in New York City this summer and want to get out of the heat and go into the nice cold, go to Madame Tussauds in New York City. <laughs> yep. Um, the only other thing I've got, uh, just a quick little note, um, is I'm amazed that she found the train station with the way that guy was giving her directions, but she was still <laughs> able to find the train oh, station. Yeah, you yeah, know? to add so, on to that, too. <laughs> yeah, uh, all right. Yeah, the guy who gave uh, took the picture of her, and he's basically a street hustler, and he goes, yeah, that's $1,500 rupees. Yeah. 
And it, which is pretty much the equivalent of $20, which a street hustler usually does either in California or New York City to right. get a picture of you in front of something. But she was able to finagle it, and she's a good uh, Jersey girl where she knows, ah, eh, well, give me a little bit more, and I'll give you the, you know, $1,500, uh, 1500 rupees. Yeah. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. And, yeah, yeah, he, he did her uh, solid, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Bit of another Terminator callback there as well to the kid that takes the picture of Sarah Connor at the end of the movie. Oh, and, yes, and, that is. Gets five bucks out of her, <laughs> you know. Uh, so... <laughs> Um, also, uh, when Kamal is with all the, the kids at the beach with Kimo mm -hmm. and their friends, uh, she, you know, her mother thinks that she's with her cousins, but she's not. She's like hanging out around these other kids that are pretty cool. But the fact is, is that, you know, Kimo or Kino is, is pretty much, uh, means minced meat. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> I thought yeah. it was pretty cute. And they would ask her what her, uh, uh, her nickname would be, and she said, "Sloth Bear, Sloth Baby, Sloth Baby, uh, Sloth Baby." That's okay. what her production company, her podcast production company, is Sloth, Sloth Baby. We saw that really in the, in the first episode. Yeah, we saw that Sloth Baby Productions or Sloth uh, Baby, whatever. Cool. So yeah, it it felt right for Kamal because she felt like she was comfortable within her own skin and embraces all those people and embraced the culture. And the fact that she was like a little concerned about the food and it, mm -hmm. eating it out of bags, like <laughs> kind of like Ziploc bags. Yeah. But, you know, she was fine with it at that point. You know, it's not like her face was like boiling over with the, uh, yeah. honey puni, which is a very hot food too. Trust yeah. me. You don't want to have that in hot weather out in the bright sun and it will make you <laughs> sweat. Trust me. It opens the pores. I had encountered that in my time. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I just loved it. And yeah, the episode was very cool. Uh, a couple of quotes that I would have that I got from it would be uh, this would be uh, Nani to Kamala about the bangle and how Kamala talks about her experiences as it being a puzzle. And she goes, but if you lived as I have, you would find beauty within the pieces. Mm -hmm. And that was her grandmother. Yeah. I've got a couple as well um, from the beginning when they're on the plane. And she said, I thought I wasn't supposed to speak unless rules of grounding are not applicable over international waters. I just thought it was a funny line. <laughs> yeah, because she was grounded yeah. <laughs> by her mother. Yeah. Uh, the last one I would have would be uh, Kamal's cousin goes, come on, this is not exotic enough for the ABCD's Instagram. <laughs> you know, American born confused Desi. <laughs> and that was about Kamala's lack of interest in her own culture, walking about within Pakistan streets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the last one I've got is just when they're on that uh, that whole when they're in that that uh, that cart and they they go up on one wheel and Kamala says, "I knew you were going to murder me." And, and Kareem says, "We're not there yet." Uh, that's what his name. His actual name was Kareem, but they called him Kareem. Kimo but they call him Kino. Yeah. yeah, that's his yeah. nickname. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just love that, you know, these are, are a couple of quotes that I have left mm -hmm. would be, I just love that Kamala's mom wants her own mother to come to America after all this time, regardless that she feels torn between, you know, being moved from India and living in Pakistan all these years. You know, she just, you know, they had that nice, lovely mother daughter conversation no, it's an older conversation for an older daughter, mm -hmm. uh, older woman with their elderly mother and trying to bring her back to America, but in a sense of not leaving her in the country that she's at to live and die, but to be with her family in America where it's a bit different and people don't know who she is, but to be their own. And you could see the love there, especially too with Kamala and, and her mother too, when she comes back from that, uh, the fire on the uh, the beach where, you know, she comes in and both of them had a revelation of their relationships with people. And one being Kamala with those people that she met with uh, Kino or Kareem and those people and finding her place. And then Kamala's mother finding and understanding her own mother. And then they sit there and, you know, th there was that ongoing joke about, throughout the episode about the uh, toffees 
and the mm-hmm. toffee was, <laughs> it was, it was hard, hard. Yeah. Hard toffee. Yeah. Hard toffee yeah. because it's been sitting there and it just kind of like got solidified. <laughs> she goes, Oh, and it was like a mother daughter bonding moment at that point. Mm-hmm. And it was very touching. I thought, I thought it was yeah. very good. Yeah. That's all I had. That's all I had too. Wow. Okay. Well, that was quick <laughs> <laughs> for two episodes. I think that's pretty quick. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that, that was our coverage for episodes, uh, three and four of Miss Marvel. And, uh, I hope you guys liked it. Um, yeah, I, I look forward to the next episode. We have two more episodes of this. How many more episodes of, uh, the, the boys do we have? We've got two more episodes to cover on the podcast. Um, mm-hmm. so that's, that's two more episodes of Miss Marvel, two more episodes of the boys. And, and then uh, we jump into Umbrella Academy. Umbrella Academy, yep. Yep, cool. And then most likely Invincible with Jamie and I. Or if Jamie can't make it, then either you, Rob, me, <laughs> or whoever wants to jump in and have fun yep. with it. That would be great. Thor Love and Thunder is coming out next week as well. And Yes. Then, like you said, She-Hulk is coming, I think, later in July, so... Yeah, we we got a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to cover. We might be a little bit delayed, but we're trying to keep up with the times because out of the pandemic, we get all this influx of media that we have to cover people. Mm -hmm. And we're only one podcast. And honestly, this is a hobby of mine. I just love doing it, but there's only so much time I could do out of the day. Same thing with Steve. We have regular jobs, but we love what we do with this and we have fun. And uh, I hope you guys realize that and enjoy what we cover. That's why we love if you can give us any feedback uh, at all, it would be great because I'm loving listening to other uh, watching other shows and sending out feedback to other friends that we have. I still have to send out feedback for Strange Indeed for Stranger Things and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I hope you guys are doing that, too, because Stranger Things. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> to me that yep. is amazing oh my lanta all Very right good. but uh that was our coverage for uh miss marvel season one episodes three and four uh i just want to thank everybody for listening i'm mark and i'm steve and this was panels the pixels good night everybody good night